Oh, I think it starts with a P. The card's peeking out, so I kind of have an idea what episode we're doing. Oh. Maybe like petrified? Maybe something that's petrified. What is petrified in this business? My face when I am about to drop a stone. <laughs> Usually the things I like in the business that are petrified are wood. Petrified wood. So three boxes, which means triple the fun today. Yay, just had to do it. You know, you guys, sometimes you just gotta rip the Band-Aid off or rip the, I don't know guys, the lid. Is that what the lid? Man, I just can't think this afternoon. I have a pretty cool piece of petrified wood in here. Wowzers, this is really heavy. Jeez. Okay, I'm gonna break the box. That was not very ladylike or graceful. We got petrified wood. I'm a little nervous. Am I, I can't get splinters from this, right? I don't think I can. I have seen quite a decent amount of petrified wood and I wasn't expecting it to be this heavy, but I guess when it's like basically stone. Or that, that's not wood, that's stone. So first thing I noticed, definitely how heavy it is. The banding right here, can you see that? That's really cool. Each color is a different mineral that is coloring the piece. I believe the blue that you're seeing is like manganese dioxide. I'm pretty sure it's manganese dioxide. That's kind of cool that you can learn, you know, like literally what minerals are in here just from the coloring. I like those colors, it looks like a watercolor. I think this is really neat. Like people that have found petrified wood, sometimes the wood is preserved so well that it doesn't look like a stone. It literally looks like a piece of wood. Like right here, it looks like some bark. There are some people that find petrified wood and they try to pick it up like I did and it's super heavy because it's stone. There's some like pieces coming off the petrified wood and they literally look like splinters. Isn't that cool? It's like a mineral. I don't want splinters, but I don't think I can get a splinter from stone. Can you? We didn't learn that in gemology school. I probably shouldn't rub my hand in it. So fun fact, petrified wood is a fossil. Second fun fact, petrified wood forms when you actually have groundwater that flows through wood that is underground and deposits minerals. And I think it's like one of the coolest things that we've had on this channel so far. And what's also really cool that I've had on this channel is Elizabeth. Elizabeth is a geologist and she's gonna be my guest today and I'm really excited. Elizabeth and I are gonna get to the root of petrified wood. Sorry to pull you away from your desk. Don't feel sorry for pulling me away from my desk. <laughs> Ready, one, two, three, go. Oh crap, go. <laughs> that one must have been harder over there. It's I saw probably because it it's heavier. Peanut wood. I want some peanut wood. And I have to say a really cool piece of petrified wood. Okay, that I would not say that that is petrified wood. Because where you don't see like the minerals like you do in this one. Well, I mean, just think about it. If you have different depositional environments, you can have ones that are colorful or you can have ones that more closely resemble an actual piece of wood. So the colors can be determined by what's dissolved in the water besides silica okay. as they were petrified. So these are all different elements or different little minerals that help color the quartz. Blue, blue is magnesium dioxide. Was I right on that? There's quite a large yeah, list we'll of things that can stain that. wood like that. But I do know that some vanadium can actually color petrified wood bright green. And you see it a lot in pieces from Zimbabwe. So you can have these pieces of wood or logs. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of the same way that preserving other fossils like trilobites and things like that works is that you have a rapid burial of whatever the material is, say petrified wood. You've got layer upon layer. And so over time there was a lack of oxygen and a lack of like bacteria and other organisms, organisms to break down the organic material. And so it's basically saved from decomposition. Mm -hmm. Over time you have water that filters down through the overlying materials, transporting with it your silica, which is your quartzes. It also transports different trace elements or different other minerals like your manganese that help stain it. So like like your iron oxide and things like that. And so what the water does is it pulls out basically the organic material and then the other stuff replaces it over time, which is really neat. That's so incredible. things like if you ever see a piece of jewelry that has quote unquote dinosaur bone in it, there's actually no true bone there anymore. It's minerals that have preserved the actual bone marrow pattern of a dinosaur. This is peanut wood. Yes. Peanut wood is petrified wood, but I know it's different because of the markings right here. That's mm -hmm. not typically seen. I don't see that in this. Right. Nothing to do with peanuts though. No, it's just the shape of the markings. That's why it's called peanut wood. Petrified peanut wood is actually driftwood. Oh, I love driftwood. So the driftwood was floating around in the ocean. And has anybody ever heard of shipworms? Like we modern shipworms? We were shipped. 
though. You, but we're not worms. But did you know that we were shipped? Yeah, I did hear about that. How do you feel about us being shipped? I think I'm cool with it. Are you cool with it? Yeah. I'm definitely cool with it. I think we're fun. I think we're, I think we're really fun. <laughs> so what's neat about this peanut wood is you have these little creatures and it's an extinct species, but it's very similar to what is a modern clam called a shipworm. And they are pretty much the bane of any sailor that has ever been in a wooden ship or anybody that has a dock in the ocean. So clams apparently are larvae when they're born, they're not just already a little little shell swimming around. What was this? It's a clam This looks swimming. like that camp, what about that camp song? Little shark, do, 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 Oh doo, my doo, gosh, shark, yeah, doo. I remember That's that. what I was thinking of when you did this. <laughs> it be a clam. Clam be like that. Okay, well, well, you can make a clam, there we go. <laughs> so these little shipworms, they swim around and then they attach onto a piece of driftwood. And over time, as the clam gets bigger and actually develops like a shell, they use the back of their shell as a rasp mm -hmm. to dig into the driftwood and actually eat it. So they eat rotting wood. Well, so then eventually the driftwood gets all these holes in it and it gets waterlogged even more so than it would have been if it had just naturally been left alone and it sinks to the bottom. The clams are still there and eventually they perish or they leave. I'm not really sure if they get out of there quickly or if they slowly clam away. But um, so it gets to the bottom and then the white is actually a little organism called a radiolaria. And radiolarias are made out of phytoplankton and they're made out of silica and their shells when they die are white. And so then they make radiolaria ooze, which is basically just a whole bunch of dead ones that pile up on each other over time. And they fill the peanut wood holes. So that's why you have this white. Well, so once you get enough of it and it gets enough pressure, it creates a super saturated silica solution that actually moves into that rotting wood that's been buried and petrifies it. It's really neat because it's all this organic action that creates an inorganic material. That's really cool. How old do you think these three pieces are? Okay, so if I remember correctly, these guys are somewhere in the range of 66 to 200 million years old, somewhere in there. This guy is a little bit younger, and so they're anywhere from 25 to 66 million years old. A little bit younger. A Only little about bit younger. 40 million hey, years. Hey, in the geologic time scale, that's younger. So wait, so can we, when were dinosaurs around? I want to know. Oh, at the same time. Really? So you're looking at your Cretaceous, Triassic, Jurassic. I am terrible with my dinosaur time frame. Speaking of dinosaurs and fossilized things, you've seen coprolite. Oh yeah. You guys know what coprolite is? Should we tell them? Yeah. Fossilized dinosaur dung, and I am working my hardest to get it on this show. <laughs> it's pretty neat. It's, it's actually ancient turtle poop. Isn't that crazy? But they're dinosaurs. They're like tiny turtle well, dinosaurs. Yeah, I mean, it's the ancient version of a turtle. That is so They're turtle sores. Turtle sores. Coprolite, look it up. Spam the comment section and say coprolite and maybe we'll get it on the show. So what I believe has happened here with this one, the reason that it really looks pretty different from the other two is that with these, you can have very distinct casts and molds of tree branches right. instead of a true replacement of the material. And so what I'm thinking kind of happened here is that you have where the wood may have rotted out and you're left with like all of the internal textures. Mm -hmm. and so so then it's that replaced by look silica. Like a stone in any way. No, it form. seriously looks fake. You can actually see the little knots in the wood. So like can you've you, got a little can hole get in splinters it. Splinters from this? Probably not. I you wouldn't know, go like did you see some splinters rubbing that my were... hand across it, but you can get mineral splinters, which really hurt. Do I have but it's any? usually the more finely sharp, pokey stuff. <laughs> and then this guy. Yeah, this guy's heavy. This is probably it's probably over 20 pounds. Did you see how hard it was for me to get that out of the box? <laughs> yes. So you can actually see, so these are actually the grain of the wood. If you had a tree standing here and you chopped it off like at the base, this is what you're looking at. This is the rings of the tree. So what you're seeing here is you're actually seeing the vertical growth lines. If I saw that on the ground, I would have no idea that that was petrified wood. I would think that that was just- A it, piece of wood. It literally looks like a piece of wood. And oh, you know, it definitely parts does. of that, like if that was under some leaves, I wouldn't think anything of oh, it. Yeah. Now, if I saw this while hiking, I'd think I was looking at something that was rotting away, not necessarily something that was petrified. So this right here is you've actually got a layer of chalcedony. So you've got Got these little I saw that, yeah. betroidal dudes that are really neat going on right here. I'm trying to hold this up the best I can before I drop it on the table and probably break things. You can see these little patterns and it feels rather smooth compared to the rest of the specimen. I know, I noticed that and I like the And little... it wasn't polished. And then up here, you've got some more. So obviously as it was being replaced, this was also exposed because this feels more like a piece of true chalcedony rather than quartz replacing something. Mm -hmm. And it's got a little bit of a sparkle to it, which I yeah, really, that was really, really like. Cool. Would you ever cut this and make it into jewelry? It would be really neat, but to me, the thing that I think is the best about this piece is the texture of the outside of it. Look, Actually, still 
looks like a tree. Forest. And that's the other thing I really like about this piece, oops, <laughs> is that it really does look like a real tree. But on this guy, the other thing that's really cool is that you can see where you have rings mm -hmm. right there very faintly. I can't listen to that. Easy. It's a rock. You know, it's just every little tiny detail is what makes these that, it looks so like, look interesting. At that. that looks like burnt wood right there. I should have just brought like a literal log in here and handed it to you and just said, yeah, this is petrified wood. I would not have believed you, but I would have appreciated you trying. Both of these pieces are actually from Washington State, and so there's quite a bit of petrified wood up there. But because of the age of the trees, these guys were actually around at the time that both conifers and deciduous trees had evolved. There's actually like a state park. I think it's like the Petrified Ginkgo Forest or something like that. And you can go visit it. Now you can't collect there, but you can go visit it. Looking at where these guys are from, they actually are from fairly close to that area. So one of these could possibly be a Petrified Ginkgo tree, which hmm. would be really neat because the Petrified Ginkgo trees are one of the only trees that was one of the original early trees that still has a living ancestor. This guy right here, honestly, if I had to guess, I wouldn't say that he was in Ginkgo and that's just from looking at like yeah. the textures and stuff like that. It might be like an oak tree or something, which is really pretty cool because we still have those hanging around, quite a bit of them actually. And the peanut wood is actually from a type of conifer. They actually make really pretty jewelry out of them. A lot of petrified wood nowadays comes out of Madagascar. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a piece of a tree trunk and it's like a... <laughs> Did you see that? Yes. <laughs> I caught it with my I know, well, Wonder just... Woman Spider-Man reflex. <laughs> You're so danger prone. I am just clumsy. I've got a piece of petrified wood and it's from Madagascar, but it is it's actually pink. It's really pretty and you can see the uh, rings Hematite. on the tree. Probably more likely to be an oxidation state of manganese. They can have several different oxidation states. They can all cause several different colors. This is like a macro scale replacement where you have like the whole log is, you know, either rotted away or in some way, shape or form just creates like a bigger mold. Kind of like if you stick a shell between two layers of concrete and then you pop those pieces of concrete up and you've got your cast and then you have like a mold on the inside that mm -hmm. you can make. Well, so with petrified wood that's preserved to this detail, even on the inside and the outside, think of the replacement being a cast and mold process on a cellular level. There have been studies done on trees and plants that are petrified because you can actually see the cell walls and see like the microscopic structures which is really wild it's really cool when they're being replaced even though you know you have this like kind of crazy concept of water just kind of like moving through something it's literally just very slowly over time taking the cast of what that cell would have been and filling it with silica and all these other dissolved materials typically these things are buried through like a very quick event like say a volcanic eruption, a mudslide, an undersea burial. So you have an earthquake and all of a sudden like you have a Tonight. piece of rock like give way underneath the water and then just buries over top of like your little peanut wood. And then all of a sudden it's cut off from the natural decomposition environment. When that happens, you have stuff like this guy, which usually you don't see this unless the wood's already kind of started to rot. And it washed down off of say a mountain or into a river and was deposited and then quickly covered. All right, Elizabeth, why don't you show everyone what you want them to take a closer look at on each of these pieces? Well, so on all of these, or I guess these two guys, cause you can see the texture so well, but just notice just all this really fun texture and I especially love this right here because you can see like the layers of the wood that were preserved and then you see the chalcedony up top that you can see these really cool little patterns and it's got a little bit of a sparkle to it and then right here you can see all the rings of the tree that were actually preserved and all the different elements that made the different colors. What about this one? For this guy it's all the textures and like little knot holes that you can see because that's actually very unique for a piece of petrified wood to have this much and I mean intense detail. I think this is my favorite out of the three. I would say if you really, really look closely where my finger is, you can see some of the grain of the wood. It's really hidden. It's very dark. But then you have all these bright white holes where the shipworms or the ancient shipworms created holes and burrows. And then it was later filled in by radiolaria.
today was awesome. I loved how we talked about peanut wood. I think peanut wood's really cool. I liked how we talked about getting more fossils on this show. Elizabeth and I are gonna put our heads together and we're really gonna try to find a way to go hunt for petrified wood. I think it sounds like a great idea and that we could have a lot of fun. Comment below and let me know what you wanna see coming up on the show. I always love to hear your opinions. It makes my day to hear from you all. So wouldn't you like to see what we've got coming up next? Like and subscribe. We'll be rooting for something good. Mm -hmm.